Ever since I came to understand what it meant for my parents to be Holocaust survivors, but particularly on Yom HaShoah, I've been struck with the ironic observation that but for the Holocaust, I would never have been born. My parents met and fell in love in concentration camp. In Bergen-Belsen, despite a forced social distancing, their love affair continued as they passed love letters to each other, hiding them from my father's first wife and from my mother's parents, all of whom were in Bergen-Belsen. I'm named after my father's father, Frederick. He and his wife, my grandmother, who I never met, were murdered in Sobibor. My middle name is Benno. That is my mother's brother, an uncle I never met, who was murdered in Malthausen. My father's sister, I never met. She died at the end of the war of typhus in Bergen-Belsen. My parents had countless uncles and aunts and cousins, all of whom died. Miraculously, my mother and father were among the 10% of Dutch Jews who survived the Holocaust. And soon after the war, they married. And I came along as one of the first of the group of Jews born in Europe following World War II. My father never hid what happened. The stories were countless. His walking on the streets with his Jewish star in Amsterdam one day when he and five or six other young Jewish men were put against a wall and the Nazis commander said to the troops, ready, aim, fire. But there were no shots, my father survived. Of giving his boots to, my, to his parents when they were going to Sobibor, never knowing that it was a death camp. Of convincing one of his closest friends towards the end when they were in Westerbor, another concentration camp, not to volunteer to go to Auschwitz with his then girlfriend. As I said, there were countless stories. My father died at the age of 102 and he lived a very fulfilling and healthy life. For at least 50 years, the last 50 years of his life until around age 100, he spoke and lectured to thousands upon thousands of students, church groups, temples, and civic organizations about his experience, my mother's experience during World War II, and my mother joined in those conversations and in those lectures and talks over the last 20 years of her life. My brother, sister, and I are very fortunate that our father always had a positive attitude towards life. And that comes through in the documentary that was made of their lives, an award-winning documentary, Steal a Pencil from Me, which incidentally you can be seen on Netflix, which is based on the love letters, the secret love letters they exchanged in concentration camp as they hid their relationship as best they could from my father's first wife and from my mother's parents. On Yom HaShoah, I particularly recall how my father closed every speech and lecture that he gave with four principles that he asked everyone to live by. One, do not discriminate. Two, don't be a bystander. Three, work for peace. Four, enjoy the simple things in life. As we today remember the six million, I ask each of you to think about those principles, to be mindful of them, to speak out whenever anyone, but particularly our leaders, do discriminate and do encourage, even implicitly, hate. Yom HaShoah is a date of remembrance. And that remembrance requires that every one of us be mindful of its lessons and to teach it to each generation so that they in turn will do so for the next. This way, the world will never forget. One further comment. I don't know if anyone can see it, but this is a photograph of the 21 members 
of our extended family. My parents, three children, their five grandchildren, seven grandchildren, some of whom they got to know and who got to know them. They are what my mother calls our sweet revenge. Thank you.